Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so more cool wines here. So <laughs> I've got something from Croatia. Yes, I'm like all the cool kids are, are coming in. All right, so Croatian wine. Let's talk about that real quick before we get into the actual wine here. Uh, their winemaking history goes back about 2,500 years, back to the ancient Greeks. Now, the majority of Croatian wine is white, and a very small percentage of it's rosé. And this is a white wine here. They have three main regions. Uh, it translates to English to Eastern Continental, Western Continental, and Coastal. And uh, Istnochna, Ist, Istochna. This one I didn't look up. I'm just going by how I think it's supposed to be pronounced by all the little other things I've looked up. And Continental in Croatian is basically Continental, but not quite. Uh, Zapadna for Western, and then Primorska for coastal. Pretty sure those are all correct. This, this wine is uh, called Poship, and it's P-O-S-I-P, and it is pronounced Poship, and uh, from the Korlucha wine region, uh, I'm sorry, Korchula, not Korlucha, Korchula wine region. Uh, this is the signature white grape of uh, the Dalmatian island of Korchula, which is about halfway between Dubrovnik and Split. Maybe I should real quick have google translate tell me how to pronounce it in croatian split 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 yeah basically um and on croatian's long slice of the adriatic coast actually from your perspective it's like that yeah or like this i don't know anyway uh frano uh Benicevic, uh his first vintage was 2013. uh he's the winemaker so he has notes from his great grandfather. So I'm not quite sure how all this worked out because there's not much on their website and Psalm Select, where I got the wine from, doesn't really go too much with their history. But my guess is that the great grandfather made wine and then maybe there was a generational like gap and then Frano uh, took up the winemaking and his first venture was 2013 or maybe his father was involved. But it, it seems like the father and the grandfather are like skipped over. Uh, Korchula was part of the Venetian Empire uh, until the early 1800s. Its cuisine and culture still feature many nods to that era. Windswept, arid, and lushly forested. This is all from Psalm Select. The island contained thousands of hectares of vineyards in pre phylloxera times, but these days there are roughly only 450 hectares, 70% uh, which are white grapes and mostly uh, poship. The soils contain lots of iron, giving them a reddish cast like those of the Istrian Peninsula farther north. Frondo farms just five hectares of vines that overlook the Adriatic in the small village of Smogvice, um, favoring locations where the vines are protected from sometimes harsh winds. Uh, the, this wine, the name, the name Toretta, refers to an ancient cone-shaped stone shelter stone shelters that are found in the island uh, was fermented and aged only in stainless steel so no oak on this so paid uh total 26.81 i bought it uh two years ago actually the summer of 2018 it was on a summer hold so it didn't arrive till the fall so thank you psalm select for being very uh, conscious of weather when shipping now i could have if i wanted to i could have like had it shipped um, during the summer, they would have done like temperature control and you would have packed it with dry ice and all that. But, and they've, I've had the dry ice stuff from them. And you know, by the time it gets to the house, the dry ice is melted. Uh, not that the wines are ever hot, but the dry ice is melted. So, all righty. Let's check this out. 
So the white wines are getting progressively lighter as I as I get into them. They're also progressively younger. This is the youngest of the white wines I've done today, but there's still a good, fairly deep yellow color on that. I do get I, I there's way more hints of green on it. Um, I'm not using the you know the monitor, so I don't, I'm not actually getting the green screen. I mean I'm like I'm just like looking straight on it. So there's definitely a, a greenish yellow uh, hue to it. Not highly aromatic, but I get definitely a ripe peach to it. Peach and orange, kind of similar to the Chasselas I had last week, as far as the primary uh, aromas, along with the requisite flowers <coughs> of those fruits. And there's, there's more of an over-ripeness, almost bruised quality to the aroma on it. It's also like a papaya. Yeah, papaya. Yeah, like papaya. Guava. Guava, that's it. Not the papaya. It's more guava. That's cool. Yeah. Like, I had these guava chips. Like, they're like, like guava chips. And they were so guava. I mean, I'm assuming they were natural. May not have been. But yes, guava is more the is definitely the uh, lead aroma on this. Let's check it out. So on the palate, there's this prickliness of the acid. So fairly high acid grape. I would say kind of close to Riesling as far as the acidity level on that. The guava is really what comes through so much on the flavor profile. You get the peach and the orange. It's a, a ripe in nature, not overripe or bruised like I was getting initially on the nose from like the peach and the orange. And then the guava just kind of took over. It was just ripe, right? But it was almost like that kind of intense flavor. Like I said, those guava chips I had, um, I had them like a couple months ago, just like get that, so you can get that, that flavor of guava. So it reminds me of that on the palate and on the nose. It is super tasty. I really like this wine. It's not sweet, but you really get that ripeness of the fruit. And the acid is really refreshing. So it's a high acid wine with a lot of guava, orange, peach. And it's really just fruit driven. There's a minerality to it also. I mean, there's that prickliness of the acid. A lot of times we <clears throat> perceive acidity as minerality or minerality is you know from the acid. So there is a wet rock component to it. But to me, it's more just an acid, just, just acid. Delicious wine. I mean, it's not cheap. It's not expensive necessarily, but I think it's like officially $25 on Psalm Select. And then you have like a little bit of shipping um, and tax and insurance and all that. So yeah, I like this wine a lot. If you can find this wine, especially Toretta, but you can find post ship somewhere, you're gonna have to go to like a specialty wine shop Probably something like a really like a smaller like wine shop. You're not going to find it in something larger. You might. I don't know. You're probably not going to find this in a big box store. Um, but you're probably going to have to find this, or you're going to have to like know it's distributed in your state, and then go to somebody that can order stuff for you and order it. Realize you'll probably have to order a case of it to make it worth their while. But I mean, if you want to drop twelve times 20, 25. 800 bucks, whatever that is. Hey Siri, what's 12 times uh, 25? I'm on it, okay. I found this on the web for what's 12 times. Yeah. Check it out. I'm not checking that out. 12 times 25. 12 times 25 is eight, $300. Wow, I don't know it's 800 bucks. Yeah, if you want to drop 300 bucks on some wine, that's actually not bad, right? We get a discount too, that'd be cool. Check it out. I like it. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. 
As always, click the links above to frame me up. There'll be links below for everything, the Psalm Select, the winery, they also have a Facebook page. There wasn't a lot on there, but you can check that out. PayPal, if you want to throw some ducats my way, and we'll see everyone again next time.